Hello and welcome to another painting tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you the simple technique of layering highlights. Here we have our goblin spearmen all shaded and darkened up as you can see with the color. So now we're going to add some highlights using the layering technique to bring back some of that color. Here I have my base coat paints already in my palette and then I have the rest of the colors I'm going to use to highlight the color, to highlight the areas. I have a selection of brushes, some fine tip detail ones. So as I said, the wash, the shade wash darkens the color, you get the deep shadows, but now we want to bring up the, the highlights, bring up the color, bring the color back into the model. So I'm going to reapply my base coat, but I'm only going to apply it on the raised areas where the light is hitting. And if you're not sure where the highlights should go, Hold it up to your light, your desk lamp, and make it simulate sunlight shining down onto the model. As you can see, it's right here on the top of his head, tip of his nose, tops of the ears, the shoulders, the hands, and on his feet will be the more prominent highlights, the brighter areas. On the back here, where the tunic meets the belt, you just want to apply the lighter colors right there at those edges where the sun's hitting it. We're going to start with his face, his skin tone. So add a little water, make sure that that paint's nice and flowing. You have a nice tip. And just apply it to the raised areas of the model. Here on the tip of his nose, his eyebrows. Cheekbones. Upper lip. His chin. jawline you want to make sure that your paint is flowing nice and smooth off your brush to get those nice smooth highlights nice blends you're just hitting the raised areas keeping that shadow dark it might take you a while to figure out where that is but this simple trick that I like to use is holding up to the light and seeing where the light's hitting the model. I'm using my thumb to see the consistency of the brush. knuckles. I use the side of my brush and just drag it across the model and the raised areas will pick up the color. Like so. Also a nice technique with the brush is as you pull it across the model, you want your high light at the end of your brush stroke. So as you take your brush up off of the area, the mo more the pigment will 
stick. So right here on his hand, on his arm, I want more pigment. The color, the brightest highlight, right here. So do a stroke, and as you your brush leaves the model, that's where the most pigment, most pigment, pigment. Sorry, the pigment will stay. So let's say I wanted to do it on his knuckles. More the knuckles, I would just rotate it and do it the other way. So here I want the most pit, the most pigment. I'm having problems with that word today. We want the most pigment brighter highlight right here and then as it's wet you can smooth out that edge to make it blend just doing a back and forth motion and it's thin enough with your water that it's flowing as it dries, as long as there's not a hard edge, it'll blend in there. Nice smooth highlight. Getting his kneecap right here. I work around this spear and just I want the brighter highlight right there, the his kneecap. The elbow. Now with the air, the rest of the areas, I'm just trying to go through the colors, the base coat colors. Bring those up. You can change out your brushes from a larger one to a smaller one, depending on the area. Whatever works best for you. You want the right brush for the for the job. You don't want to do a use a fine detail brush for your base coats but it just would take too long you want to use a larger brush and you can use a larger brush for your fine details as long as you have a nice fine tip on your brush and you can get those sharp edges as you see here I'm pulling up pulling the paint up to where I want the most highlight. Leaving those that darker shade in the recesses. Reapplying the base coat gives it a very nice transition. If I were to, to go straight to my Nets highlight, which is a little bit brighter, it might be a bit too much of a stark contrast. So I, right here, I'm leaving that a bit dark just to keep it in shadow. I'm using the side of my brush right here on the edges. Now even though I already applied the base coat, going back over for a second layer, let's concentrate more on the edge, towards the edge. That gives me a nice transition of highlight. Without even changing a whole lot of colors. paints are thin you can do that. Alright, so we'll move on to our next color. That's our, our leather. Now here I'm just trying to hit the very tip edge of it to give that definition, that highlight. 
I don't want it too bright. I want it kind of worn and weathered leather, beaten up. Just want to bring that highlight, bring that edge. I'm just hitting the tips. Leaving the shadow color in there for that contrast. We have the straps on his feet. So we just want to hit those edges, those top raised areas, leaving that shadow in between to help separate them. Now if I were to get paint in that area, I can just go back with a darker color or even my shade wash and just apply right there, right in between it to separate it. Go slow. And just slowly add the highlights. Now if you keep your arms rested on your table, like so, you can keep it steady. strap right here underneath the blade. I'm just hitting those raised areas with the base coat, keeping that shade in the recesses. Gives it a nice definition. I'm just going back, reapplying my color for a second shade just to add a little bit more brightness to it. Alright, so now we have the wood grain. And now this part, we're just going to drag our brush, the edge, down the length of the spear. Just to get nice crisp lines to make that wood grain. Move your brush. So I want more highlight to this area right at the top where the sun's hitting. I'm starting at the bottom and working my way up. And as I pull my brush off, that will leave more color. Some models, the sculpts for wood grain, aren't always sculpted into it, but you can simulate the illusion of a wood grain with the highlights, just like this. Don't worry about if the lines aren't straight. Wood grain is not, doesn't have straight lines. So if they're a little wiggly, that's okay. And like right here, if I wanted to, I can go back with a darker color, maybe even the shade, and just draw a line right in there. All right, with the metallic, the metal areas, same thing. You just want to add a little bit, a hint of the shine from the metal. That dark, that second wash made it really dark, weathered, tarnished. So just adding a little bit of the highlight on the areas where the light's hitting it makes it pop. edge. That's the brightest highlight at the, at the edge highlight at the top. 
Now he's got that belt buckle. We want a nice fine tip on our brush. And like I said, you want to roll and twist and gently pull it up back to get that nice tip. And we're just touching just tap tap the areas just slightly touch it to apply that paint just on the edge all right so now that's the first layer of reclaiming the area is what we call it now I'm going to go back over and apply a second color so we're going to go to a lighter color so for the death world forest we're going to use the Citadel Layer LCN Green. It's a little bit of lighter color. And we're just going to add a little dollop here on my palette. Maybe a little bit more. This right here is already dry, so it's not going to mess in. And I'm going to take an even finer tip. a little bit of water in there to make it smooth. Loosen up the paint. We get a nice fine tip. And we're going to do the same thing. Now with the layering, you're slowly building up the highlights. Kind of like a pyramid. Where you have your base, the layer, layer. Smaller and smaller and smaller. So on the nose, I'm just trying to hit near the tip of it. On the nostril. The cheeks on the tip of the eyebrows, the upper lip. So, just like before, just a little bit less. So, we want to leave that first layer shining, showing through. Just reapplying in smaller areas, bringing more of that light to it. Make sure previous layer is fully dry before you add more otherwise you might pull up the paint and leave a little leave it patchy so we want nice smooth finish on it He's got most of the highlight on the top of his head and we're just bringing it in in the other areas leaving previous layer and the shadow and the recesses. So once again that same thing where you want the most highlight is where you pull up your brush. And this technique, this step is where is the takes the longest. But it's the most fun because that's when it really starts to pop. And now I could leave it at that base coat highlight but I want to add a little bit more to this guy. Make him really 
stand out. This is just a one model. If I were doing multiple models for an army, I would have stopped at the reapplying the base coat. Because doing multiple highlights on 20 plus models still looks good, but it's time consuming. That's really good. Alright, so now we're going to go to the red. And this is our base coat, the Memoph Memophiston red. And we're going to add some Evil Sun Scarlet to the raised areas. I'm letting that green dry a bit before I apply the next highlight. So I'm moving on to a different color Why wait. water to loosen it up. Make sure it's flowing good. I got some paint down too far so I make sure to wash it. Make sure your brush is thoroughly clean before you switch colors. You don't want to mix up colors. Alright, so now I'm looking at my model under the light to see where my highlights are going to be. to the tips, the edges of the area. So where I want the most color, that's where I'll end my brush stroke. Leaving the previous layer and the shadow you can see that building of layers. Propping my finger up against my other finger so I can keep it steady. You just want to keep building up your color to where the light is the most prominent. A little bit, a little bit further up on the edges just to get to the very tips. That's where your brightest highlight is going to be, the very edges. Alright, so we got the red done. Now we're going to move on to the leather. up your paint. So it's loosened up. It's flowing nice off your brush. Just hitting those raised areas. Now with the brown, I move to the next highlight color, which is Citadel's layer Scrag Brown. Got almost an orange tint to it. So we'll just thinner and thinner lines at the very edge. And if you happen to make a mistake, it's okay. Just go back with your previous paint and cover it up and start over again. So I'm just going to the very creases, very tips, to add this color. And if I want, I can go to the next step 
and add even a lighter color to it. To add more contrast. Alright, so now we're going to move to the spear. We're going to add layer to this color, which is the Talarn sand, which is a yellow brown. Let's add some wood grain on here. Just very thin. Thin lines. Don't get my paint flowing well. You want the, the paint to flow off the brush really good. So just they don't have to be straight lines. And if you want, you can just do one whole line up the center. You don't need to do the whole wood grain if you don't feel comfortable with it. Just to add a little bit of highlight to it. Just do some fine highlights. Use the side of your brush to get those sharp edge highlighting. Quick and easy. Alright, so before we move on to the metal, the last bit of this, I'm going to go back to the face and add some Elysian green. I apologize if I butcher these names, but we're going to do this color green. We'll just say that. So that's our mid-tone for our green skin. Just add a little dollop on our palette, thin it a bit. So it flows nice and easy. We're just going to add some more highlights to the face to make it a little more, make it pop some more. So work on the nose. Just lighter on the edge of the brow, the top of his head. Leaving that previous layer there underneath. Just smaller areas to pick out. To bring them out more. Which is the Odrin camo. Very almost a yellowish green. Once again, add a little bit of water to thin it. Make sure you get a nice fine tip. And this is just going to be on the very tips of his nose, and top of the nostrils, just very lightly. We're not going to do a whole lot of highlights. There's the brow of his face, tips of his ears. Alright, so just the tips of the ears, just where the, the light is going to hit most. Top of his head, a little more shine. Alright, so now we're going to go to add a little more color to his face. We're going to do some Citadel Glaze, the Blood Letter Red. This is a very thin. These are very thin paints for glazing. A little different than your shadow, your shades, where it doesn't go into the recesses. It just lays on top of the paint of the, the model. 
where you apply it. So here we're just trying to do at the tip of his nose. Just add a little bit of color to it. Quick, easy way to dry is just to lightly blow on the area you just added paint. Do it on his, on his eyelids, lower eyelids. And if you want, you can add some to his bottom lip. Just lightly cover over it. And if you want, you can add more highlight, but I think he looks pretty good. So now we're going to move on to our metal. Add the Citadel Layer Iron Brick. And when you're using metal paint, make sure you you have a different jar of water for your metal and for your non-metallic. That way you don't contaminate the colors with those little flakes of metal. So with this we're just going to hit the very top edges very light edge highlighting of it. Just on the very edges. It's the top part where the light will shine on. And edge highlighting to get that sharp edge of the blade. Just like so. Very quick and easy. So now we're going to go to our brightest highlight which is the Storm Host Silver. And the same thing, we're just trying to hit the very top edges for this highlight. We just want to give that sharp edge on the spear. Just on the very top parts of that armor.